So, this is uh, going to be somewhat of a different topic, but as you would see from the title of the stream, everything I'm talking about today is about relationships. So I talked about logarithms, which is the relationship between power functions and its inverse, which is a logarithm. And so it's, it's sort of like asking a different question in a sense. But this next part, I am going to be talking about sexuality. And so, um, specifically in the realm of psychology, there is a, a uh, somewhat simple uh, scale that was created by a man named Alfred Kinsey. And so this scale, I'm just going to draw it out, but essentially it's somewhat of a rating of, of someone's uh, sexuality in terms of their heterosexuality, so I'm going to try and write sideways here. Um, failing. Heterosexual and homosex... I'm working on it. Uh, okay, that may look bad, but... Um, okay, so, and then there's these boxes, and a line, and then, um, one, two, three, four, is that enough? One, two, three, four, five, six, yes, I believe so, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and... There we go. Let me see if I've successfully colored uh, or completed these lines. I have not. I People who have seen my um, random drawing section, which I will be doing in a little bit, um, I'm terrible at finishing off these lines. So we're going to color this in. I'm so close. Okay. So we have our... Dang it. <laughs> we have our scale here. And so, um, as the orange grows, then that would mean that someone is to more of a homosexual orientation than a heterosexual orientation. But there are these values in the middle that are somewhat even. Um, so, this is basically a... Uh, it, it was the first accepted uh, understanding of of sexuality. So what happened in psychology is, um, for a while, homosexuality was actually considered a, um, a mental illness, as in they had a, uh, there's a big, uh, like, guidebook to mental illnesses and mental disorders, and homosexuality in some of the original copies was considered a, uh, mental disability almost. And so, obviously, as society, pro society progressed, we've uh, evolved that realm of knowledge into a more accepting community. But um, so this was one of the first sort of exceptions of the idea that there's some gray area. Um, now, obviously, only having six options is still being somewhat categorical. So it's, it's still categorizing people into boxes. And the thing with with science and with uh, with more logic-minded people, they, they want to um, group people together because it's easier to some sort of, I guess, deal with... Um, well, okay, L let's think about it this way. Demographics. Um, so, obviously, today we are, are pushing to have a, um, a more accepting society that's more fluid in a sense that um, it... There's there's less racism. There's less um, there's less pointing out of the fact that people are different. I, okay, so people are always going to be different, but um, that doesn't necessarily make people unequal in a sense. So um, that's what society is pushing towards is this idea of equality. But at the same time, when you go into idea uh, into concepts of marketing and economics. Creating demographics is a very efficient way of projecting your ideas and your products 
to people that may be interested in those products. So let's say that you have a, um, I don't know, let's say it's a Sears commercial for grills. Those, those commercials tend to come out on, in football games and, and, um, maybe big sporting events. And, uh, and the reason for this is because they're attempting to, uh, reach out to a male demographic. Now it is very widely understood that not, uh, that the viewers of sporting events like football aren't just male, but there is a very high percentage of males in that uh, demographic that is watching a sporting event. And there's a high percentage of males who are interested in grills. So uh, obviously there will always be some gray area, but statistically speaking, you can group people together in a sense. Now, um, I will say that this scale is somewhat limiting. Um, so let's say, so basically to explain it, there's a box here that's completely uh, blank. And this means that um, this box is representing completely heterosexual. Uh, I, I was reading up on this before I started the stream, and essentially um, the original sort of test for um, where someone fell in this scale was actually how many um, sexual encounters a, a person would have with a given gender based off of their gender. And so this would be someone who has only had sexual encounters with the opposite gender. Um, now, since then, the scale has been opened up uh, a little bit more to just... Um, because, obviously, there's people that may have um, thoughts and, and desires that don't necessarily match their actions. So uh, since then, this, this scale has been opened up um, to a little bit more uh, abstract, subjective... Uh, understanding, but at the same time, psychology today hasn't doesn't really necessarily go by this scale anymore because we understand that um, that grouping people together into individual categories isn't the best for describing the individual. I think is that that's working. Okay, um, okay. So the, the thing is that today we are now uh, starting to understand a lot more that when you, uh, maybe on a macro scale for something like providing a product to a group of people that may be interested, um, creating categories, creating brackets, creating demographics uh, does work. And it, it may offend some people in a sense that, that maybe there's someone who really hates grills that's watching a football game. Um, with their friends and they just uh, they don't like grills at all but statistically it works on a macro scale but when you get down to the micro level of the individual or perhaps a small group of people you can't put people into individual categories because um, you don't you don't get that picture of the individual characteristics of a person uh, and how they feel on the inside um, simply from some statistic like how many uh, men they've been with and how many women they've been with in relationships. Um, so I think that Kinsey's idea of, of creating this category was a good step for psychology because when, uh, when this chart came out and when this, graph, um, this graphic idea came into existence, it sort of open people's eyes to the idea that there isn't certainty. There isn't uh, an analog nature to this. There isn't just um, heterosexual and homosexual. There's an entire spectrum in between. So um, there's a bunch of different categories in the middle where maybe someone is completely half and half, which we call bi, or there, there's in total, uh, there's so many different names for um, the uh, sexual orientations that people accept for themselves, but even people within those uh, specific categories can, uh, can feel completely different about how they view sexuality. So um, this is, I, I guess this is just something to keep in mind uh, when talking with people in society today because the world is changing and um, things that were acceptable in 
creating understanding in the past don't necessarily uh, meet the standards of today's society and the diversity that we now understand is out there. Um, so that's pretty much what I want to talk about on Alfred Kinsey. Um, I do like having these uh, psychology topics on the stream. Psychology is a um, topic that really interests me. And it felt like um, having a psychology topic would be a nice counter to the math topic of the four of logarithms. So um, I'm going to be moving on into my final section of the uh, random drawing. I have my stuff out already. Um, I guess I finally learned, but um, I want to thank you if you're still watching already or if you're watching uh, this on the, uh, if you're watching this not live. Um, so I'm going to get this all set up and we will move into the random drawing. 